the fight. It is fight week. My host, as always, Shannon O'Connell, Joel Camilleri, Shotgun, how are you? I'm so cold. It's cold in Queensland today. Imagine living in Melbourne. <laughs> Cameron, how are you? I'm doing great. No complaints here. Because <laughs> he's from gonna, Melbourne. We'll get to hot. you. You've been on tour, so we'll talk about that. But amazing night down at the ICC in Darling Harbour in Sydney. What a great performance from both guys. An amazing event. And this is how the night went down. Here we are for official weighing proceedings, Gallon v Hooney. Nothing but fireworks yesterday at the press conference. Can't wait to see what the, the boys have to offer us today. It's going to be a cracker. been a lot of uh, media on this fight, you know, and it's uh, it's reflected just in Justice's profiles going through the roof. Paul Gallon probably never had a higher profile, and we're looking forward to a massive fight night tomorrow night, and I think we're going to see fireworks, and I think it ends with Justice knocking Paul out, and uh, Paul won't be on his back, he's going to be face down uh, on his stomach, and that's about the worst way you can get knocked out. I don't think there's anything wrong with saying, speaking your mind and saying what you think, and you know, again, I wasn't trash talking, I was, I was fact talking, I only brought up facts, so I haven't said anything that hasn't happened before or isn't true, so um, that's why I like to do it. I, you know, I didn't really enjoy the, the Lucas Brown stuff, just talking trash for the sake of it. It wasn't, it wasn't great, but um, yeah, it, it happened. And you know, this one, I've just tried to talk facts and, and stick it to being pretty factual, and I've done that so far, and I'm not going to change. Uh, speaking of body punching, did uh, Joel Camilleri actually learn how to body punch when he was with you? Or? Well, he's 70% better than he was before, but well, like I said, in training and in the ring, it's two different things, you know what I mean? <laughs> you like to dance and clown around, so... Ready to go, mate. I'm ready to go today, today tonight, when, uh, <laughs> yesterday, the day before yesterday. What? Let's go. <laughs> the official weigh-in is finished. Well orchestrated by Ben Damon, as always. Absolute fireworks. Andre Mikhailovich, Alex Hannon, Emmanuel Carlos, Isaac Hardman, and uh, a few words, extra words, from Paul Gallon to Justice Sooner. As you can see, Paul Gallon's behind us there, uh, finishing up his media. And to my left is Justice Hooney. It's been an absolutely amazing event, very professionally done. DNL events, Tasman fighters, it's going to be an absolute cracking fight. Very special occasion. Gallon v Hooney, all the talks over, the weigh-ins are done, the press conferences are done. Tonight is the fight. An all-star undercard, a great event put on by DNL and by Tasman Fighters. We can't wait to bring all the coverage to you. fights I, I thought were pretty uh, entertaining, eh? you know, Sam Goodman, awesome performance, you know, you got Hardman and Eamon, oh, two soldiers that went toe to toe, you know, Hardman, uh, every time Hardman fights, my respect just goes for him more and more, so, you know, Hardman, bro, well done, um, Justice, just, uh, you know, I, I knew Justice had a display that was always going to be fun, like, he, his skill level is just very high, and it was always going to be tough with Gal. Oh, it's a roller coaster, mate. Um, I think because I'm the, the the brother, you know, so I'm I'm constantly riding it with him. But I was just happy he got over the line and and kept throwing him um, with 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 the injured hand. All right, it's been an amazing night, an amazing night, and I'm just thrilled that all three of our boys came through. You know, Andre looked phenomenal. 
I thought that fight was going to be really interesting based on how much they hated each other. Mm. And I thought it might have been a bit closer, but I thought Andre just dominated for two rounds and finished him off. Yeah, I just, I didn't have much tonight. You know, I, I didn't have any movement with my rib. I just kept clicking every time I tried to move. And, you know, he just did what he had to do, man. Was, I've got to give him credit, full credit to him. I, I can't take anything away from him tonight. He was just way too good and way too fast. And, you know, I, I don't know if he knew he hurt me or not, but he somehow kept hitting it. <laughs> yeah, it was sore the whole time. It, it felt really good entering that building, man. It was, uh, there was an awesome crowd. Um, and like I said, it was it was going to be 50-50. Gal had his supporters and I had my supporters. And, um, yeah, we went to war. Um, this is what I do it for, mate. Nights like these. Um, this is where all the hard work and training pays off. All the media, all the lead up to the fight, um, that's where it all pays off out there under the bright lights. From there, we move towards the boxing shop and their fight night at Nissan Arena on Saturday, the 19th of June, headlined by Rowan Murdoch and Les Sherrington at Super Middleweight. Great fight night, guys. This is what Rowan Murdoch had to say after he finished up his camp and doing rounds with Jack Bowen. <laughs> Ron Murdoch, eight days out, yep. final spa, Jack Bowen, how'd that feel? Yeah, I'm really good, um, you know, a bit fatigued in that being the last spa, but um, performed really well today and looking forward to next weekend, man. Next Saturday we're on, bounce back, um, been a year out of the ring for me, so I'm keen as ever to get back in there and put a really good performance on. Last time we spoke to you at Nissan Arena, you said you had itchy knuckles then. Yeah. They must just be ready to be scratched off by now. Yeah, that's it, man. It's been literally 15 months. So this prep's been really good, though. Like, you know, outside the ring, so I'm keen as now and, and keen to go for it. And really, really good form at the moment. Mate, technique's looking sharp. Body's looking sharp. You're looking ripped up. Must be on weight pretty close. Yeah, pretty close, man. So we're doing a catch weight for this fight, so 78 kilos. So, I mean, I'm sitting about 81 now. So, you know, I can make weight tomorrow, really. So weight, weight's easy, um, perform really well and ready to crack on. Thankful that uh, an experienced pioneer in Les Sherrington's coming and stepped up for you. Yeah, man, I've got a lot of respect for Les. Eh? He's a good family man, really nice guy, and he wants to have a crack. He wants to show that um, that he can compete with me. So, man, all credit to him. Um, I hope it comes through. It's going to be a good fight. I know he's been inspiring some top guys. So, man, it should be a good fight. Looking forward to seeing you back under the lights, mate. Go get it, mate. Yeah, thank you very much, mate. Appreciate it. And Jack obviously had this to say as well. Jack Bowen, Nissan Arena, eight days away, super middleweight. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm feeling great. Uh, just finished off the prep today with um, more rounds with Rowan Murdoch. And, mate, it's quality. We've been sparring each other for the last probably three, four years and it's always quality work and always good preparation for me before I get in the ring, yeah. Mate, you've been an aspiring partner for some of the best in the, in the state and obviously that's, you know, paying dividends, their people are rating you the way they are, that must feel pretty good. Yeah, I, and I think it shows in the work I'm bringing to the ring now. Um, last fight obviously had a good prep with Ben Marnie and then with Rowan now and the work rate will be a lot a lot higher this fight, um, but just through the rounds I've been doing and I've been pushing out good conditioning and you know, you work with quality boys, you get quality outcomes, so yeah, I'm enjoying the process. Now obviously um, there's been a bit of a hiccup with uh, the possible opponent, but you're saying focused either way? Yeah, look, I can't really control anything like that. All I can control is me getting in the ring on the night at the best version of myself, so whoever's there, it's going to be the same result. How's weight? Weight's good, yeah. So we're fighting this at super middleweight, um, and then looking to move to middleweight the fight after, and everything's on track, everything's good. Mate, we're excited to see the great style, and you know, you've obviously got a great amateur pedigree, and you box well, we've got a big following behind you. We're looking forward to seeing you under the lights. I appreciate the support always. Thank you guys for coming down today. Massive card, guys, on the 19th of June. It, we've got Dave Hadfield, who obviously didn't perform on his first fight against Billy Ching, but he's a really well-credentialed amateur, and you'd expect a better comeback for him, Shannon. Yeah, I um, actually bumped into Dave uh, like a few weeks back where he trains. I do all my running and stuff, and um, yeah, he's, he's pretty keen to um, get that win back, and he's 
more determined than ever. Look, he's got a lot of skill behind him. I think he's going to do really well, but we'd love to see him really shine under the lights, Cammer. Yeah, well, I heard he's been doing some rounds with uh, Luke Medini down at East uh, Side Boxing Gym, so I heard he's tough as nails. I haven't seen too much of Dave Hadfield, but... Bit you know, of a workhorse. Yeah? Yeah. Mm. Jess Cashman, one of the coaches there and also coaches of the Futures program, has got a fight coming up as well. Um, looking forward to seeing her fight again. We haven't seen her fight since Townsville, where you fought against Kylie Fulmer. She fought against Lynn Sandstrom. Oh, yeah, that was, um, that was her debut. She, she had it. That was a good win for her. So Jack Bowen, I rate him as one of the best up-and-comers coming around. He's got such a great credential as an amateur. He's done so much internationally as an amateur. It's been a little bit hard for him to, come, to get off the grass with pros, Shannon, but that kid has got all the skill in the world and he's doing rounds with everyone. Yeah, for sure. I think they, they, they do struggle finding him opponents, um, but he's, spar he's literally sparring everyone. Like he's doing some really good rounds. He went down to Sydney and did rounds with Zoo as well. That speaks volumes for a guy that's only had two professional fights, Camera. Yeah, I think once he finds his, his weight and just campaigns at that weight, then he can start making some moves. But as we all do, we, have our, we do our apprenticeship first. And then you can't really judge someone until they step it up and fight these good fighters, but so far he's doing well. But yeah, great talent, Jack Bowen. Huge. Sam Beck rounding out that card. Ben Cameron hands debuting. Austin Acuso won it. Vegas Larfield. So there are fights to be made there in these weight divisions. Great talent out there. A lot of people ready to emerge. And it looks like if they can get these fights, it's going to be great. There's some great fights coming up for the rest of the year. I'm pretty excited about um, Austin Acuso's uh, debut. Like, There's a lot of talk about him for a long time now, so... Let's see how he transitions to the pros. Mm. Speaking of the Akuzos, Paulo Akuzo and the rest of the Olympic team has made their way to America to start their American part of the campaign before obviously going to Tokyo to start the Olympics. So they are now out of the country and all our hopes and wishes go with them. But some great talent there, Shotgun. Oh, yeah, there's some massive talent. Like, the, I mean, there's, there's Commonwealth Games medalists in that, in that Olympic team. So you'd hope that they'd go on and, and be able to do this, the exact same thing at the Olympics. I think no one expects... Uh, the Australian fighters on the world stage to, to win medals. So uh, there is pressure on the Olympians for the Australians, but at the same time, on a world stage, they're not you know, renowned. So they're going to go there with um, nothing to lose. And if they do medal, then it makes a big name for Australian boxing. Australia, by far, has always done really well in the light heavyweight division, which in the amateurs is 81 kilos, not 79. And Pulo Akuzo is a strong medal chance there. Katie Park is a strong medal chance in her division. Obviously, we've got Sky as well and Justice. Might be a little bit hard for Alex Winwood and Harry Garside. Uh, a lot of the Central American and South American teams are in there and they're very strong in those weight division shotgun. It's sort of like the different countries are better at different weights. Like mm. the littler you get, you've got all your Asian countries and, and um, like the, I mean, Russians are good in every weight. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think, um, I think the littler guys are going to find it a little bit harder. It depends on the draw, yeah. Of course, if they get put against like the, the Russians and the Cubans and those kind of dudes at the start. It's going to be very hard for us Australian guys to win and girls to win medals. But if they can, you know, get the other countries, get a couple of wins and then meet the Cubans and the Russians in the finals or for the medals, then they've got a better chance, of, I think, for sure. Yeah, Look for sure. That's yeah. the worst thing about the Olympics. I, I've, I've been overseas straight up drawn the gold medalist twice out of four times going over. No, not fun. Tough work there, but all our hopes and dreams go with coach Kevin Smith and Mark Wilson and the rest of Boxing Australia and the Australian uh, Olympic boxing team. The guys, are gonna, I'm sure they're going to do, do us proud. Well, on this week's Third Man's Thoughts with Phil Austin, he discusses how to score a fight. I've given you both your instructions in the dressing room. I'm just going to tell you again. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Touch them up, back you go, and best of luck at the bell. On today's episode, we're going to talk about how to correctly score a round of boxing. So when scoring a round, I look for three main scoring criteria. Scoring criteria A is clean punches. And for that, to me, that personally means power versus quantity. Obviously, in a boxing match, we don't want to discriminate against a boxer who can't hit as hard as his opponent. But at the end of the day, this is professional boxing, and the opponent who hurts his opponent is going to be the person who's going to get more credit off the judges' scorecards. Part two is effective aggression. Basically, who is landing the most punches? I must clarify the difference between aggression and effective aggression. I hear quite often from people, well, fighter A was coming forward the whole way. He was most aggressive. 
Yes, he was, but he was getting hit continually by his opponent who was boxing off the back foot. So effective aggression is landing the most punches in a round, not just walking forward. Now the third part of scoring a round, and quite often the most controversial because it, it can be deemed to be different things, is ring generalship. To me, ring generalship is who is controlling the action, who is making the other person fight his fight. That is a big part of ring generalship to me. You don't have to be coming forward, you could be a defensive boxer boxing off the back foot. If you're bringing that fighter on to you, that is ring generalship. You are bringing him on for him to fight your style of contest. Now the scoring criteria that we use in professional boxing, pretty much anywhere in the world, is that of the 10 point must system. That basically states that the winner of the round must get 10 points and the loser 9 or less quite dependent on what action has incurred during that round. For example, uh, you'll also find quite often that a knockdown will bring a different score because it, in some states you will find that it's an automatic two-point swing for a knockdown, whereas other states, like Queensland, it is one point for a knockdown. As you can see here, Jane has dropped Joel at a time when Jane was in control of the contest. She's dropped him with a punch, so that is a knockdown. She is now ahead in that round, 10-8. Quite often in a contest, when people are watching what they consider to be a controversy in a scorecard, they're looking at the last couple of rounds. That's what they remember. And that's not how a contest is scored. A contest is basically a certain number of mini fights. Each round is scored individually, and at the end of that round, the judge's card is collected by the referee and taken to the supervisor, who puts it onto a master score sheet. At the end of the allotted rounds, be it 6, 8, 10 or 12, the supervisor will know exactly who is ahead on the scorecards and who has won the contest. There we have it, great little insight there on how to correctly judge a fight for the social media comment section that uh, we're always up against there. So a little bit of education for them. Phil Austin, always great to have on the show. Yeah, no, he's awesome. He's a good character and he's always um, a good to have around. Yeah, strong member of the AMBF and well-educated. He's obviously refed a couple of your fights. You've run into each other, but a lot of respect for you, Shaka. Yeah, absolutely. He's very passionate about refing and, and judging and he, he, he does love boxing. Like, you know, you get some some people like school teachers that go to school and don't like kids. And um, <laughs> Phil loves boxing. Clay Waterman had a win on the weekend. Great to see the light heavyweight uh, amateur superstar coming through and getting a win. He had an opponent change last minute on him, but went down to New Zealand with the team and got the job done. Uh, third round stoppage there for Clay. So good to see him get a fight and to get across the border for it, Shane. That's um, what, three wins by knockout? Mm. Oh. Good work. Good. It, I mean, it will be good to see him step up with a with a better opponent and get some rounds out. Not a bad effort. He came to a catchweight at 83 kilos. He had like two weeks notice, camera, and he had to get rounds in with Zoo. He's done well. You know, he's done well. And um, I know it wasn't the opponent that he wanted to fight, but you know, he he knocked down the person that was in front of him. Mm, so well done, Clay and Team Waterman. Well done. So, Cammy, you've been on tour for the last six days down in Sydney and well received by everybody. You did. You know, you were everywhere. Bring us up to speed. Yeah, well, um, I've seen everyone in Sydney pretty much, so I started off... Get around off, this guy. Yeah, <laughs> I get around. Now, I went down to uh, spend some time with uh, Skinny Hussain, uh, Coach Keefe and Jeff Fennick, so um, got some training in with uh, yeah, Skinny, Coach Keefe, and also went past Jeff's house and had a bit of a talk, just got a bit of advice on just some boxing and just kept, you know, just like a sponge, just soaked in all the information. Now, mate, you've always wanted to fight Jack Brubaker and you've been offering out Troy O'Malley for a while as well. Yeah. What are the chances that you walk into Jeff Fennick's gym and both of those guys are not only there, but <laughs> sparring each other? Yeah, I know. He, um, he called me up. He's like, where are you? I'm like, oh, just um, going for a drive on a train. He goes, oh, I have to come watch some sparring at this gym in Five Dock. And I've gone past there and it's Jack Brubaker and Troy O'Malley. And I've walked in, I'm like, um, oh, my two enemies. And then um, they've turned around, I jump in the ring now, we'll spar. And in my head, I'm just like... I'm going to call you out again. <laughs> 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 nah, but uh, it's all good. Like, me and Jack probably never meet. And that's why I've gone and, like, sp spent some time with Jeff Fennick. Me and Troy O'Malley might meet, so I hope that fight will happen. But Jeff said, anytime, you're welcome down for sparring. And Jack works pretty well in the ring. I watched him spar that day, so I'm looking forward to getting some rounds with him. 
Mm. Now, obviously, uh, we had the go-lives during the week, and Liam Pope, after his Queensland featherweight title, has come out and offered... He's basically called out both Sam Goodman and Vegas Larfield on the go-live. So Benny Harrington was quite surprised by that. But, look, that could be a great fight there with Mark those three boys. Mm. He's a big boy, isn't it, Liam? He's, he's tall. Looks yep. tall and ripped, and he will drop again. Yeah, but coming out of a great gym there with Hinterland, yeah. Stephen Pitt, Brad Hoare, Dana Coolwell... You know, so he, he, he said he could make the weight and he put it out to fight both Sam Goodman and La Vegas Larfield. So, so obviously the go live is some great stuff coming out of there. Hunter Uwoni wanting to fight Kane Clark and, and uh, TC Priestley wanting to fight Luke Jackson and just the boys are all showing up on the go lives calling each other out. So make sure you tune into them. And Hunter jumped on and also called out TC Priestley as well. Yes. Like, are you that are you that TC guy who won the title? <laughs> yeah, I, I want to fight you, mate. Yeah, yeah, I'll fight you as well. Yeah, <laughs> he wants to fight everyone. Hunter, he's great value. Yeah. Still, no word on your fight with Shanika. Um, look, we verbally agreed. Um, well, they don't have a set date. They're talking August 20 or August 27th. So I'm starting fight camp to, like this week, um, aiming towards the 20th. Obviously, if I, I'd rather an extra week than cut up, cut off a week. Um, we don't have contracts at all, but it's it's been verbally agreed, so I'm just going to start training for it. And Cameron, when's your eye operation? Yeah, it's happening this week, so yeah, under the knife. No, it's mm. only like a 10 minute surgery, but yeah, I'll play it pretty well there. Yeah, no oh. doubt. And, <laughs> and uh, unlike Zarafi, you will take a photo of yourself at hospital. <laughs> yeah, I'll be taking three selfies before the operation and after. I'm Rob Scheif, and you're watching Before the Fight.